In this video, we see the inverse trigonometric functions in detail, especially the graph of sin inverse x. Since the chapter is inverse trigonometric functions, definitely the study of inverse of a function as well as the trigonometric functions such as sin x, cos x, etc. would be taken care of. And since it is inverse trigonometric functions, so we would not be studying sin x but sin inverse x. We would not be studying tan x but tan inverse x. In this video, let's see the graph of sin inverse x. There is a graph drawn over here. It is y is equal to sin x. It is simply the sine curve which we already know how to draw. For those who still don't know, let's see how the graph is to be drawn. I know that sin 0 is 0, sin 90 is 1, sin pi, sin 2 pi, these all are zeros and sin pi by 2, sin 3 by 2, 3 pi by 2, these all are 1s. So just simply plotting the values, sin 0 is 0, so sin 0 is 0, sin pi by 2 is 1, so where is pi by 2? Pi by 2 is here, where is 1? 1 is on the y axis here, so pi by 2 and 1 will give me this point. Similarly, sin pi is 0, so sin pi will be here. Sin 3 pi by 2 is again 1 in the negative direction, so it is here and so on. So by plotting these points, by joining, you get a sine curve which is already drawn. Now, this was sine x graph. Till here, we have already seen in our junior classes. But what about the inverse of this graph? What is the inverse of sine x? The first thing that we have to keep in our mind already every time that inverse of a function would only and only exist when my function is a bijective one. That means it has to be 1, 1 and on 2. But is sin x 1, 1 and on 2? No, because here we can see that for two values or more than one value, I am getting the same answer. That means if I see sin pi by 2, it is 1. If I see sin minus 3 by pi 2, it is again 1. So that means it is not 1, 1, but it is many 1 function. So how do we then get the inverse? In such cases, when the function is not 1, 1, you have to make it 1, 1 to get inverse. How to make it 1, 1? You have to restrict the domain. Suppose I take only a small part of this graph. That is, suppose I take only from 0 to pi or if I take only from 0 to say 3 pi by 2. That, in that case, what will happen? In that case, everything else will vanish and then I have my function as 1, 1. So what do I do? I just restrict the domain of periodic functions to make my graph as 1, 1 and then I find the inverse. Now, I will see what is the graph of sin x when we restrict the domain and then we will draw the graph of sin inverse x. Firstly, let's take the case of sin x. What we are doing is we know what is the graph of sin x in detail from here. But the problem was that it was not restricted in its domain. Now we have restricted the domain, everything else will vanish. What will happen? Only minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 is considered. The graph is what? Sin 0 is 0, sin pi by 2 is 1 and sin of minus pi by 2 is nothing but as minus 1. So it is somewhat here. We have to just do what? We have to just draw the graph by joining the lines. Joining the lines will give me a graph something called as like this. It is a curve. It has to be made in the curve form. Just don't make it a straight line. Let's make it a curve. A bit more curvy linear would be something better. So let's make it a curve. Right. This is the small portion of the graph of sin x. Now, how to make sin inverse x from sin x? The criteria is very simple. You just interchange the x-axis and the y-axis. 
the y axis has what it has 1 0 minus 1 what we will do for sin inverse x we will do 1 0 minus 1 not on y axis but on x axis this time so 0 1 and minus 1 will come on the x axis this time what happens next the next thing is nothing but as we have minus pi by 2 0 pi by 2 on the x axis you change it you change it as pi by 2 0 minus pi by 2 on the y axis so nothing but my x becomes my y and my y becomes my x you just interchange for inverse the first thing the second thing is what you have to take the reflection about the line y is equal to x we know the graph of y is equal to x it is nothing but a line which is at 45 degrees to the x-axis you just take the mirror image or the reflection about the line y is equal to x so what happens i know what is my line y is equal to x my line y is equal to x is nothing but a very straight line so my task now is to draw the graph in such a manner that i draw the reflection about this line let's draw it above will become below so above becomes below y is equal to x i had something above i make something below just to draw the literal inversion image or reflection coming about the curve downwards in the third quadrant i have something below i will make something above so making something above the graph will become like this can you see the difference the difference is nothing but that for a line y is equal to x i will draw the graph of inverse from the graph original one and whatever is above will become below whatever is below will become above whatever was my x will become y whatever is my y will become x so in this video we saw that any periodic function like sin x will become its inverse would exist only when we restrict the domain and one more point to note that if i write anywhere sin inverse x sin inverse x is never equal to sin x inverse because sin x inverse is what it is 1 upon sin x so it is not the case one more important point that every time you know restricting the domain will never always mean that i have to consider minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 only you can consider anything you can consider pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2 or you can consider negative axis branch so whenever by default if i have to take a branch called as minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 it is called as the principal value branch let me write the word for you people it is what it is a principal value branch which branch is called as the principal value branch which is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 this branch is called as what it is called as the principal value branch let's write the spelling here it is the principal value branch principal value branch is what it is the branch of a trigonometric function from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 in the next video we'll see the graph of cos inverse x